Hi, Kira listeners. Let's learn sumo. Welcome back to the podcast. You want to leave me a message, drop me a comment, come to my Insta at Let's Learn Sumo or Twitter, and I will try to respond. So let's have a look at the Henka, a more divisive kimarite you won't find in sumo. We talked about this in the September review the other night. Takakesho won the Akibasho in a playoff against Atami Fuji using a Henka. Well, what is it? So, at the touchy eye where the wrestlers face off against each other, they synchronize their breathing. The Gyoji referee gives a signal, most likely in Makuchi, where you see both wrestlers touch the ground. They touch the ground, both hands, and they charge towards each other at the touchy eye. Now, touchy eye means to stand and meet. But instead of meeting the charge, one Rashiki wrestler dodges to one side as his opponent goes forward and likely overbalances, unable to stop their momentum, and they face plant or they touch down, losing the bout. Now we know there are 82 winning techniques in sumo, kimarite, uh, and the basic premise of is to force your opponent out of the ring or get him to fall in the ring and touch down with any part of his body except the soles of his feet. The henker allows them to do that by dodging and forcing them to go face down. The henker, it actually means change or variation. It's where one wrestler sidesteps fast enough to perform usually what they call a hitakikomi slap down on their opponent, whose momentum is fully forward at the charge. It's described as unsportsmanlike, not sumo. Well, is it a legitimate move in sumo? Perhaps it's discouraged at the top echelons of the sport. Maybe spectators don't love it. Regular Magashira proponent is Abi, who does get some comment around the amount of a hanker he performs. And I think he actually won a basho a few years ago using the hanker, similar to Takakesho. The touchy eye usually results in two rishiki of significant weight colliding at the touchy eye with significant force entering the grapple or their style of sumo, maybe supari thrusting. Smaller wrestlers like Enho don't always perform the full henker, more of a diagonal move to prevent them from meeting a significantly large wrestler head on, where the weight advantage clearly goes against them. Now, it's a popular move for smaller wrestlers against larger opponents, uh, and but not all of them use it regularly. Some, like current Magashira Midori Fuji, he prefers to get in close, and he's found a lot of success with throws such as the uh, Watanage, Sukiyanage, and things like that, and leg trips. Enho, prior to his injury, which has forced him down the ranks, he used a version of the hanker where he went diagonally at his opponent to get a different hold. He's basically not trying to play to his opponent's strengths. But it's not a true sidestep out of the way hanker. And as we've seen, the hanker it comes in a few forms, a few variations. But why does it evoke such rage on social media? Apart from the fact that Tucker Kesho perhaps isn't the most popular wrestler on social media, his win by hanker at the Akibasho playoff bout a couple of weeks ago seemed to bring about comment both in and outside of Japan to those watching. And it starts with the intent of sumo. Sumo is a sacred sport brought about 1,500 years ago as a harvest ritual based in Shinto religion. It relies on certain attitudes ingrained over time to be an ideal inspired, aspired to by Rishiki who wants to make it to the exalted position of Yokozuna. Now, you don't make the rank of Yokozuna just by winning. You must show hinkaku, or the dignity expected of a sumo. The meeting of your opponent's skill versus your own and to best them is partly the dignity of the sport. And to avoid that by using the hanker is seen by many as not really what sumo is about. But, as you may have seen, a lot of what happens in sport is subject to interpretation and sumo is no different. Previously, the touchy eye is perhaps a little bit more upright and it prevented the, huck, uh, the hanker to a degree. And given the rules of sumo in some areas are more about tradition than black and white rule, a variation does come about. It's better to win against your opponent using your own technique against theirs and besting them. In the eyes of many, that's exactly how it should be. But take the case of Daesho in this basho, who was hankered on day one by Meisei, 
And to me, it was a pretty smart move, I may say. If you watch the videos of Daesho in the last few tournaments, he is a full super thruster. He likes the Sapari thrusting. His momentum occasionally leaves him open to Hitaki Komi slap downs due to his very aggressive and forward thrusting style. So his touchy eye technique can lead him to charging with his head down, waiting for the impact. And that's exactly what he did on that day one. Knowing that technique is his head drop and charge, why, as an opponent, would you play into his game and give him the advantage? So that's what Meisei did. He stepped to the side and Daesho, keeping his head down, couldn't see it. So after being hankered on day one, Daesho kept his head up a bit more upright as he went into the charge, a consequence of being uh, found wanting in his technique in the first day. To me, that's fairly smart sumo as it forced a change to his style. It weakened his technique and his favoured style of sumo. Meisei effectively helped all the other wrestlers by doing it. Takakesho beat Atami Fuji on day 10 by his conventional sumo thrusting overpowering his opponent. But his hanker on Atami Fuji during the playoff bout won him the basho. Was it because he saw a similar thing in Atami Fuji's technique? Or, given that Atami Fuji is just a power gripper and they're very similar sized wrestlers, was it just smart sumo to avoid the grip and not play to his opponent's battle? Is it not really within a Nozaki's dignity to perform a hanker in during such an important match? Well, they've done it. Over the years, Yokozunas have done it, Ozeki's have done it, Terunofuji has hankered people. Uh, we don't think Takakesho was nursing some injury at the time, but in the previous tournament in May, he tried a few different things like that, and he was really looking for some, uh, I wouldn't say easy wins, but to avoid some big hits given his knee problems. And he didn't have the power of thrusting. So you could look at this hanker in particular in the in the playoff bout and speculate that it was a pretty strategic move, knowing that he had faced Atami, Fu, uh, Atami Fuji previously with a fairly forceful touchy eye, and maybe he saw that Atami Fuji really wanted that grip and that he was very committed at the touchy eye to do it. He did it. It won him the basho, and he got the Emperor's Cup. So he's on the road to Yokozuna. Will it help him or hinder him in becoming Yokozuna. Well, I don't think it will hurt him because effectively others have done the same and still been promoted. Two Bashos in a row, I think it'd be a lock-in if he did uh, win in November. And given Japan is so desperate to see another Japanese Yokozuna after the Mongolians have been dominating for a while, I suspect the J Japanese Sumo Association may overlook such arguments as uh, Takash if certainly if Takakesho wins in November. So the battle continues over whether it's unsportsmanlike behaviour. Certainly, if you look at the commentary about Abi, who's a fairly regular Henka proponent. He's not popular using that move. It forces his opponents, however, to be very wary about charging at him so hard during the touchy eye. It really does change their options against him. And I think Abby uses it fairly strategically against opponents who may not expect it due to their style. Abby's also sending his next opponents in the following bouts a message to say that they can expect a hanker you know, at any time, and therefore a forcing, a forceful charging style might be dangerous against him. It's changed their preferred style, and to me, it's a legitimate sporting technique. You don't play into your opponent's preferred style, as I said before. Hanker me once, you win. Hanker me twice, and I'm a fool. And one of some of Abby's opponents know this, so you might see them slow down, or perhaps even less forceful in their touchy eye. And you can see that sometimes in other bouts where they'll wait for their opponent to come at them. The hank can be seen and dealt with quick enough. Uh, if you catch your opponent as he moves and dodges, you can leave the Rashiki in a fairly vulnerable spot because it normally means they're upright and they're moving sideways, eager to get out of the way. And unfortunately, what that does for them, it puts their weight off balance. And if you don't quite get yourself out of the way quick enough or the opponent sees the move in your touchy eye, then you can have your waist grabbed as they are hankering, is that a word, uh, the opponent at their most upright and vulnerable. Now, Arby sometimes performs a bit of a partial hanker. Sometimes he does the full hanker. 
Uh, a partial hanker may be a bit uncommitted and diagonal. Certainly uh, Kirishima and Abi. Kirishima tried a, a bit of a partial hanker and got caught. And Abi got him into a grip battle, uh, but eventually experienced Kirishima won out on. So when we debate the moral rights and wrongs of the hanker, it's within the rules. It usually is called a hatakikomi slapdown as the kimarite, uh, as the opponent bites the dust. The rules do allow it, and the Japan Sumo Association has never changed it. Sometimes a rishiki get caught doing it, and it leaves them in vulnerable state. But time will tell. Uh, will Takakosho make it to Yokozuna? And certainly a Japanese Yokozuna. It'll be popular. Uh, but did he do some damage to his reputation by winning by Henker? Amongst the Twitterati, he certainly did. There was, unusually, even a little bit of negative comment in Japan, but the former Yokozuna Hakuho said to win is to be Yokozuna, and he knows it. The most successful uh, sumo wrestler of all time. So what did you think? Let me know. Drop me a line on my Insta and we'll have a chat. That's it for this episode. Hope you come back next time where we'll learn something new about sumo. Hakyo, listeners. 